get started. Uh, my name is Christian Jones. I'm the vice president at Tax Pro Marketer, and standing next to me is Ben Grootman. What's up, guys? Ben is our director of innovation. We just had a handful of people join, so I'll let them come in, and then we're going to kind of get started here. But again, what we're doing here on these office hours is there's some timely topics, um, content, in addition to new features that we're rolling out that we just want to make a space on a weekly basis to talk about. And again, you could, in theory, bring up other questions or things that you want to engage on. Like, that's okay. But we will usually have, again, kind of a pretty fixed set of content and topics that we're going to cover to serve you guys. We just want to make sure that you don't miss out on the things you're getting as a client, or if you're not a client and just want to know more about what we're doing and how all this works, um, that's great. And we have different levels of clients even in this webinar. So this is like, uh, some of you will have some of these features and services, some of you won't, but this is just a great way to say, okay, how do I make the most of my marketing and how do I figure out what these guys are doing and how that could help me. And so we've been talking about um, the last couple of weeks, um, a few other topics that you can always go back and listen to that's in your members area. This is going to be recorded and dropped in your members area as well. So if you don't know how to get access to the office hours in your members area, please let us know and we'll make sure to show you where that lives because these are really, really helpful. Um, the, these topics, because we're excited about this stuff we talk about this stuff all day, and sometimes there can be like a gap between, oh, wait, you guys are doing this? That's how I could use that? I didn't even know that was available to me. That's what we're trying to do in office hours is just make sure you guys are completely in the loop and ask whatever follow-up questions you need to use your services effectively or, again, figure out what we're actually doing. So today's topic is going to be kind of two things. We're going to talk about six mistakes to avoid in your marketing this year. And then we are going to talk about Client Stack some more. Client Stack, again, is a new app that we have rolled out that does a few things for us. And when we first talked about it two weeks ago, I think, yeah, um, we even mentioned, well, was it dude? I think it was. Yeah. We mentioned there was this new set of features that we were going to roll out. And we're, we're kind of saying today, um, in so many words, we're ready to roll those out for those that want them. Now, we'll get to that. But like the next set of features, if you heard our first client stack webinar, we're, we're getting ready to push out that have to do with your phone. And that's going to be a part of our main topic of content um, uh, or our main content focus. But we will make space at the end to kind of go a little bit deeper in a client stack. But there's some other stuff included in these mistakes. Really simple slide deck here. Um, we're just going to get into it. And so these are things that we see people make in terms of mistakes yearly. Um, we've been doing this for 15 years and this stuff is pretty common. So this is, again, going to just be things we want you to be aware of. We want you to kind of have on your mind, whether you're solo or you've got a staff, making sure everyone in your office kind of has these ideas of areas to avoid, mistakes to not fall into. Number one, straightforward. Mistake number one that we see people make is they don't email their clients, right? So we do want to email prospects. And that's that's maybe obvious to some of you. But pushback that we get with new clients is my clients aren't going to read these emails. They, they don't care. They don't want emails from me. And that is something that we've seen people fall into the, the pitfall of just not sending regular rhythmic email content to their existing clients, especially during busy season. Um, that, that's a huge mistake. The response that we've had from clients over the years who regularly use email, and they start from different places. Like some people come in and it's like, hey, listen, you, just trust me. Like I know my client base, they don't want this from me. They, they don't want any of it. And it's like, hey, just trust us. Just go ahead and use it on a weekly basis. Um, the email content that we're producing, or if you do something else, right? If you're not a client of Tax Pro Marketer, I would still encourage you to do this. And the response that you get when you write and send warm, relational, authoritative emails, it's surprising to people. So what these emails are not, these emails are not um, always uh, pitches and salesy. 
These emails are warm and relational and trying to start conversations. That's what you should do with your emails. And now if you're getting our email service, then we're handling that for you, right? Um, more on that in a second. But just for the people in the crowd who maybe aren't getting Tax for Marketers email service, let me just encourage you to test sending a warm relational email to your client list and watch what happens. We don't want you guys to be a commodity. We don't want you guys to be a quarterly or a once a year deal that they just check the box of. Uh, you keep them compliant or, or you touch base with them you know, every now and again. We want you to be a trustworthy relational expert. This is a huge leaky bucket for most online marketing systems. Traffic, clicks, calls, that's actually a lot of my stuff. Like I'm the SEO guy kind of around here. That's what I focus on. That's really fun and compelling to talk about. But where most online marketing plans that we bump into um, kind of fail is there's no follow-up. So what do you do once you get someone in the door? If you just leave them to hopefully remember you and check base with you or touch base with you once a year or again quarterly, I mean, that can happen. But like that's where a lot of people lose clients is it's a commodity and I'm going to go with someone cheaper. And what's the real value you're bringing to me? And so staying in front of your clients by sending them regular email that is, again, warm, relational, and authoritative, it's not easy to do to strike that balance. It's massively helpful for keeping you in front of your existing clients, right? So prospects is obvious. Let's make sure we start off the relationship on the right foot. But you would be surprised. And if you're an existing client or not, I would encourage you during tax season, don't think too hard. Go into the email dashboard that we provide for you and send the weekly content. Now, here's a little bit of a big reveal. We did announce this via email, but ta-da, here's our new email dashboard. So we had an existing email dashboard. We've been doing this for a long time, but we just gave it a big facelift. This is our new kind of uh, interface. Um, so this has been like in the works for a long time. And, and again, another new feature that we're rolling out to you guys during busy season is this new interface. So the same tools are there, the same function, um, but this is a little more intuitive. It's a little bit easier to navigate. It's a little more obvious, like kind of what you're trying to do. Um, and so what you see here is, you know, the recent emails. Um, this is from a real client, uh, their, their email dashboard uh, from January 31st. Um, the small business uh, email, the tax personal email. And so if you are a client of ours, you've got multiple email tracks you can make use of. Um, there is a tax personal, which is kind of, individual tax, um, you know, tax planning, tax preparation. Uh, there is business tax and accounting. There is advisory and there's tax representation or tax resolution. So we could potentially be loading four different emails into this dashboard for you on a weekly basis. We also professionally translate these emails into Spanish. You don't need to have all those emails and you don't need to have the Spanish version, but segmenting your list and then sending regular emails to your client base just trust us. Like this is not the thing most people come to us asking about. They don't come in saying, you know what I really know I need? Good email marketing. Most people don't say that. They come in and say, I, did, I, need, I want to rank on Google. I want the phone to ring. That's really good too. We'll, we'll help you with that. We do that. But once you get people in your stable of clients, being able to engage with them and provide value and not just be the once a year person, but to actually be what, and a lot of you are going for hiring clients. This is really important. If you're not just doing tax preparation, although this helps on that front too, but if you want to land hiring clients, the positioning, the branding, the, the relationship that you'll be able to establish just by sending these emails is, is kind of worth its weight in gold. Um, okay. So that's mistake number one, Ben, the next section will be you, but before we go there, is there anything you want to add about email? Just use it, guys. It's it it really matters. Um, and we're not saying that just because we're a tax pro marketer and we care. We are giving you a definitive data-driven decision when you send out warm email to your existing clients, to people on your list that's relationally focused, it makes a difference. And that is an objective data-driven decision that we just want to encourage you guys to do because we want your businesses to grow as much as you do. So do that. Send out, send out those emails. Get on the email marketing dashboard. After people um, uh, leave your office, 
um, get in there and send them the thank you sequence, uh, the, the follow up with them, all that kind of stuff is really important. Yep. I was looking for, um, yeah, here it is. Uh, this person will remain anonymous, but this is a testimonial we got um, from a client who kind of had the posture about email marketing that I articulated. It just, they didn't think it would work. And this is a quote. This is a direct quote. I thought marketing emails were stupid and would never work. But then my clients started responding with stuff like, these are great and love the emails. I fully expected snarky responses, but it's only been positive. I was shocked and realized I should have been doing this earlier. So one more plug for email marketing. Again, a part of this mistake, people are thinking about you right now, period. People are thinking about you right now. Even if you do more than just busy season work, or even if you don't have a focus of the tax deadline for individuals, people are thinking about you right now. It's the turn of the new year and getting in front of them can, and I usually say this to a client that's starting with us, the first way, although not for everyone, but one of the first ways you're going to get new clients isn't from the ad campaign, isn't from Google, is just from sending emails. You can stimulate and generate great referrals, upsells or cross-sells just by getting in front of people. The fortune is in the follow-up. Follow up with your clients. Provide them with value. If you are a client of Tax for Marketer getting our email service, here's the mm -hmm. dashboard. Get in, make sure your list is properly up to date, add new clients to this list as you get them and push send. So Jerry asked a great question. He just said, how often do you recommend to send email? How often is too much? Good question. So if you uh, are a client that has our email marketing system as part of your service package, we recommend once a week. And, that's, uh, and we write that email for you once a week. So it's not just because that's what we do, but that really, when you're doing kind of this relationally focused email, once a week is a real solid steady pace that doesn't tend to bog down and annoy people and, and overfill their inboxes. Um, and so right. one, once a week is, is, just, is just about good. Um, if you had some kind of special announcement and wanted to do a one-off email blast, um, then that would kind of be in addition to, and you guys can see right on the slide there, there's a nice big blue button for you to create an email blast just to make that extra easy. So, so that kind of wouldn't count, but in terms of like once a week, relationally focused marketing emails, yeah, once a week is good. And this is, this is a rabbit trail we won't go down. And I'm stealing this from Nate, our CEO, but I've heard him say this a number of times and the data backs it up. When you write email in this way, you can send more than once a week email. And during the height of COVID, when this all started back in 2020 and, and you know, even you know, mid early 21, we were sending three emails a week and they were received super well. Some of you were a part of that group that were sending emails three times a week mm -hmm. for a few weeks there. And we did it because one, it was like, golly, the, the revolving door of new legislation and rules and the loans and everything that happened was, was just crazy. So we stepped it up a notch and that was received well. So maybe that timing is unique, but there are other agencies and industries that have proven if you write emails that are worth reading, people will read them. That's kind of the thing. People will read emails if they're worth reading. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to write emails that are worth reading um, and just make sure that you stay in front of people. So at a minimum once a week, but if you're worried about that, and honestly, some people are, and that's okay. Some people are like, I just want to kind of dip my toe in the water. These emails will not go out without you pushing go, right? There is, I, I'm, I'm speaking probably in a place I shouldn't. I think there's a backdoor way for us to automatically turn on sending emails for you. I, I wouldn't recommend that. I would recommend you just review the emails on a weekly basis. Um, again, I'm not trying to say that's bad or, or good, but generally we want you to see what's going out. But if you don't want to send an email, don't send an email. But this also gives you the ability when you have our email service just to kind of tweak it. You don't need to write the full thing, add a sentence, tweak a paragraph, make an adjustment. But this email, and I wish I had an example, maybe we'll pull one up by the time we're done. Or if you, if you don't know about our email service, if you want to see examples, I'll send you a few. Um, but they're long form, relationally driven uh, pieces of content that, again, just send them. That's probably all I should have said on this. Just send them. Um, you'll be you'll be better off for it. 
Okay, so mistake number two, you don't text your clients, which is a new one for us to say. Now we would always say this, but now we've got a way to help you do it. And so then um, why is that a mistake to not text your clients? Yeah, so first off, I just wanna say that we're not necessarily talking about you personally from your personal cell phone number texting clients. Um, if, if you do that, that's not bad. We just kind of like to promote kind of, you know, putting family first and not letting everyone have access to your personal time all of the time. But we live in an age where people text. And a lot of times it's more efficient, um, especially if you don't want to tie your phone, uh, phone line down. Some people might call you because they can't text you just to ask you kind of one simple question. Um, and, uh, um, and so within client stack, we actually just, I think we just sent out an email yesterday and just kind of, and talked about the new phone features and phone tools that we're making available to you. Um, and one of the, one of the groups of phone tools is texting features. Okay. So that's really, really exciting. So if you, uh, have client stack with us and you would like the phone tools, just raise your hand uh, by shooting us an email and letting us know. And, and we will kind of add you to the list because there are some things that you guys need to know about, which might seem obvious, but uh, you have to, if you're going to be texting people, that means they're going to be texting back. So you're going to need to pay attention and get those alerts, especially during normal business hours and respond to those text messages. Otherwise, people will have a negative experience, right? So if you're not going to use and leverage those texting tools, we would actually advise you to not turn them on because then you're just leaving everybody on red and no one likes that. It hurts, hurts deep down. Um, so within the client stack, there, there are texting features. One extremely powerful one is called missed call text back, which is what it sounds like. Someone calls your office through, through our call tracking system, it goes to voicemail, they will immediately and automatically get a text follow-up from client stack, just saying, hey, sorry, we missed your call. Um, how, can, how can we help? And you are, you are now in a text conversation with that person and they can ask their question. And you can write from your client stack app from the conversations area or from the lead connector app, which works with client stack that's on your phone, you can now text back with that person and, and follow up. And you can kind of answer those quick questions, set up appointments, kind of do whatever you need. The next thing are text blasts. So the same way that you can kind of email out right from the email marketing dashboard um, about maybe a little reminders or, or special dates that are coming up that are, that are kind of a little bit unique to you in your office, you can now send out text blast reminders to your list from client stack. So that's another great way to let them know about things. Um, I'm thinking especially like, let's say you do tax returns right towards the end of the tax season. You're just sending out a nice friendly text, like re reminding those procrastinators um, to, uh, um, to, to make sure that they get their appointment scheduled, uh, that kind of thing. Um, so, um, and then the kind of the next point that we have on this slide here is just quick engagement. Kind of like I mentioned before, some people have really quick questions and being able to answer those questions on the go is is massively helpful in 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 um, just uh, it'll be more efficient for you. It'll be more efficient for them, and uh, and so it's it's just a great way to serve your clients and to kind of add that layer of help and support uh, that they want. Now, Ben, about this texting feature, whatever kind of component that we're addressing, this lands in our clients' client stack app, mm -hmm. not in their phones, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. So. When we set up these texting features, that does that 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 does not mean that people are texting your personal cell phone. That is not true. So this is a a separate number or or a group of numbers called a number pool that we set up for you, and that's where all of the texting takes place. So it won't it won't uh, they won't ever have your personal phone number. Those texts will land in the Lead Connector app that can be on your phone or they'll land in the conversations area in your client stack app on your computer. Right. Um, so that's where they'll live from their end. It's a text conversation from your end. It's kind of what has a, a feel of like a, a web chat type uh, interface. Right, so you guys are using your app to engage with these text conversations, which is why we're asking you to raise your hand if you want these phone features, because the second we turn this stuff on for you, 
and you start getting texts from clients, if you're unresponsive, that would also be a mistake. And kind of like an inverse mistake from this one. You do text with your clients, but you just don't respond. So if you're going to do this, just be ready and kind of up to speed on what you need to do. Be familiar with client stack as an app, which is partially what we're trying to do here is to make sure you know how to do it. But that, that's a thing that we want you to raise your hand for and say, yes. So email us. Dean says he wants some. I love it. Dean, we'll get them to you, man. Um, uh, I've got another person raising their hand, Joey. Uh, Joey, you want to unmute and ask a question, man? Or maybe you hit the hand button by mistake. Can you hear me all right? Uh, yeah, Joey, go ahead. Yeah, good morning. Yeah, I'm fine. I find that is interesting. So when will it be up and running? We can turn those phone features on for you pretty quick once you tell us you want them. Mm -hmm. Yep, we, we have a... Um, so we, we have some emails that, that we want to send you just to make sure you understand what you're getting into. Um, but after that's done, we add you to a list and we're, we're systematically building those out for all of our clients that raise their hand for those. Um, and we are, so this is also kind of like an early access thing. And a lot of that's just because we know lots of you guys are busy and things are getting busier and busier. So we are going to kind of make another kind of push for this flag waving towards the end of tax season um to to kind of remind people that if they haven't jumped on to get those that they that they can but yeah just shoot us an email and, and we can get them set up for you rather quickly so you can have them now you will get correspondence from us later in tax season for people that haven't got them just to say look at all this stuff but if you're here now like we we can do it for you joey so uh dean wants them joey wants them guys just shoot us an email and i, I mean i don't know if it's necessarily the same day but like it really doesn't take us that long mm -hmm. to turn this stuff on um, not at all. So, so we, oh, okay. ahead, Joey. Yeah. yeah. Right. So we send you an email to support. That's fine. Yeah. Support. Yeah. Just say, I want the phone tools and we'll, we'll know what that means. Cause that's support. If you don't know this support at tax for marketer is a shared inbox that all of us can see at tax for marketer. So that that's always going to be something we can engage on tickets, uh, that come through. Um, so that that's perfectly fine. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So, a uh, couple questions I want to hit here. I think someone asked about uh, about voice over IP. Yes. So like an internet phone thing. Yes, it will work if, if you have an, an internet phone system. Um, so no worries there. One other thing that is important to mention is if you have an existing phone tree that changes things. So for those of you who don't know what a phone tree is, just real quick, you know, when someone calls your office, if the phone automatically gets picked up with a recorded message and is like press one for... Uh, for this pre person, press two for that person or whatever, that's called a phone tree. The phone tools work differently within phone trees. And so some of the stuff might not be available. Texting, yes, all that kind of stuff. But the main feature that we're still working out the kinks for with phone trees is call recordings. So that's how to get your phone call recordings. Um, so as of now, if you have a phone tree, we can kind of give you all of this stuff but we haven't worked out exactly how to get those calls recorded, but you will get all the other attribution data. Yeah. And that's something that phone trees are kind of common. And so we're working through that. But if you don't have a phone tree, you're good to go. Perfect. All right. Hey, mistake number three. We've already talked about this in relation to client stack, but we've been talking about this for a long time. Client stack is just the new way to do it. But here's the mistake because, because client stack is just the tool, the problem the, the thing we're trying to address is a lot of you don't ask your good clients for reviews. Now, perhaps, perhaps that's because you didn't know how to, um, or maybe you didn't know how important that is. So let me just briefly talk about super high level. Why would I even spend an ounce of energy and focus trying to get reviews from my, my happy clients? Um, first of all, when we say reviews, what I'm referring to is Google reviews. You can get reviews on Facebook. You can get reviews on your website. Like we could post them for you. You could get reviews on Yelp. And those are all fine. Google is the 800 pound gorilla in the room in relation to search engines that your prospects use. So now we're talking about prospects. How are your qualified or pre-qualified prospects going to find you? Well, a lot of them don't go on Facebook. Some do, like we have some clients that get a lot of leads from Facebook, 
that's the exception where most of the leads come from in this industry is the search engines primarily google um, so we are trying to optimize your online presence for google doesn't mean you can't get clients other ways and i love it when you do do it do all the things that get you clients there's not one way to get 100 clients there's 100 ways to get one client is just one way to think about it but google will give you a bunch of clients if you set it up right and so when it comes to ranking on google everything else if you're a client of ours and we're handling your website i've got your google my business page which is the name of the profile on google and they've actually just recently changed it to google business profile so google my business and google business profile that's the same thing talking about the same profile it's just GMB or GBP, your Google business profile being set up properly is like thing number one in Google's algorithm. So an algorithm is again, just like a set weight of factors or, or weighted factors to, to try and determine who's gonna be number one when someone types in CPA in your area. Who's gonna be number one when a prospect types in tax preparation or tax service? Well, again, having the page built is thing number one. Guess what thing number two is? on the algorithm. Reviews. Thing number two on whether you show up organically, this is not ads, this is just unpaid free traffic from Google in that map section, right? Do a search right now if you want to see what I'm talking about. Just type in tax service or tax preparation service or CPA. When you type that in, you'll see an ad at the top, you'll see a map with three businesses, and then you'll see website links beneath it, right? That map section is what I'm trying to get you ranked in. And that map section, the second most important factor for being in it is reviews. That's what Google is looking for. Here's the type of stuff they're looking at when it comes to your reviews. Your overall star rating, right? That's obvious. Just what your rating is, that matters. Guess what else they're looking at? How many reviews you have? How frequently you're getting reviews? What the sentiment in the reviews is? So if you just get like a five-star review with no content, that's great, but that's not as good as someone like talking about you because Google can measure sentiment. Google can measure someone's kind of emotional response to your services. It matters. So making it easy for you guys to get reviews, now we're coming out of the clouds into the tactics. You have to have an easy way to get reviews. Because what's the last thing you guys probably want to remember in the list of long things you're doing when you serve your clients? Oh, crap, I forgot to send them an email or a text asking them to leave me a review. And not only that, where do I send them? That's where Client Stack comes in. Client Stack is an easy button for getting your, your happy clients to leave you feedback, which will then fuel your ranking on this Google search, specifically in the map section. So if you type in restaurant, plumber, CPA, you'll always see that map with three businesses. Getting ranked there, staying there, and then leave the robot from Google aside for a second, leaving the algorithm out. More people will choose you if you have more reviews. That's like, that map section has three businesses. It's a dog fight. Look like the best one. Get reviews so that people who don't know you say, oh my God, like, this guy's got like 30 reviews. The other two people on the map have zero or one. Um, that's really common. And guys, like just no one, generally speaking, not many people in our industry are really savvy about this. Um, that They're not. And hey, uh, yes, great question uh, that just came through the chat. We'll talk about that in a half second. Mm -hmm. Should I, Ben, would you like me to pull up the... Please. Okay. I'm like antsy to kind of show... Okay, okay, okay. Show what some of this looks like. Guys, I'm going to stop sharing for a second and I'm going to share another screen that I've got pulled up to show you client stack. So bear with me for one minute while I share a different screen and then we'll come back to the slides. So here um, we go. I'm sharing that now. Can you guys see the screen? Perfect. Awesome. Okay. So a uh, couple of things here. So here is, here's one account. I just wanted to give you guys a look at what the call reporting stuff, I know we're not talking specifically about calls, but what robust call attribution data looks like within client stack. So you can see um, time period, top sources of calls, how they came in, how many were answered, how many were missed, the average call duration, 
So you can go down here and see exactly where the calls came from. Did it come, Google paid is like uh, ads, right? Organic, they showed up in a Google search or direct, they went directly to the website and called the number. So all that all that information um, is, is there. And then um, uh, we don't have call recording turned on for this account, but um, you can also tap a button and um, and then hear the recording for that call. And we'll spend more time on this at the end, but that's a little teaser. If you want to know yeah. more about phone tools, that's coming. But here's so, reviews. So here's here's how the reviews work. Okay, so you're in client stack. So first things first, right? You guys have to connect your Google My Business. That's kind of the whole thing. If you want people to leave you reviews on Google, you guys have to connect it in there. We can send you a video to show you how, okay? So after that's connected, you can go down right in here to reputation. So this is kind of a scorecard view. Next thing is requests. We haven't sent out a request yet. So here's how easy this is. Send review request, customer name. So you can, um, if you don't, if you haven't uploaded your contact lists into client stack yet, you can just manually enter their email or their phone number here, but let's try this. Do uh, type in testing. All right, and then do the first option, which is phone. So that's going to send a text. Just do that and then hit send review invite. Done. So that's um, that's going to come through um, to my phone uh, to uh, a main office line. Um, and so like once that comes in, there it is. Bam. So I have the whole the whole link here. Um, it's it's got your business name, everything, and you can tap on a link to uh, the the person who receives the text can tap on a link to leave a review. It really is uh, it really is that simple. Um, so let's uh, refresh this page so we can kind of see where that review comes in. Here it is. Look. So he here's the review. It was sent by Christian. It says it was delivered. Okay. So the next thing, so that's where you can keep track of that. This next section is all the reviews that have been left on your Google business profile. And you can go right in here and you can respond to those. So that's another important thing. You guys need to respond to every review, whether they are positive or negative or whatever. Why respond do you want to, to all of them? Why does that matter? Because for, for one, people that are going to view your page are going to see it and they want to see how how you interact with clients, whether they're good or bad. Two, it helps out the algorithm a ton. Yep. If Google sees engagement from the business owner on those reviews. So for, for those two reasons, and you guys do it, you read reviews, other people read reviews. And so you can easily, depending on how you word it, turn around this one-star review and people can kind of see right. what's really going on and how unreasonable people can be at different times. So yeah. respond to those reviews. But within ClientStack, it is that easy. You just tap the green button and put their information in. Done. And again, maybe one of the things that I hear commonly about not getting reviews, what if I get a one-star review? If you do this long enough, you probably will. And it probably isn't reasonable. Sometimes we all mess up and you get someone that is angry and wants to vent. It happens. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, bad reviews are unreasonable or even fake. That's really common. Don't worry about it. Respond like an adult respond with a cool head and look like the adult in the room and just keep, keep going, get more five-star reviews. Like it's okay. Mm -hmm. People can see when there's just an angry, aggressive, you know, kind of internet troll and then an adult. Right. And again, even if you do mess up, just say, Hey, like we, we'd love to talk with you. Give us a call. If there's something we can do to make this right, we'll, we'll do it. You don't have to do, here's what you don't want to do. You don't want to start an internet comment battle like on Facebook, right? Have you guys all seen that on Facebook where it's just like two people going at it in the comment section? Don't do that. This is not the place to stoop to the level of, of name calling or, or just being petty or bitter, even if it's deserved because they're crazy. It happens. Be an adult, respond professionally, put on your kind of PR hat, if you will, um, and just post what you need to, and then deal with it offline if you can. You can flag reviews. You can flag reviews for removal. 
So Google has a big team to handle this, but wouldn't you imagine they get like a bajillion requests a day for reviews to be removed? Um, it does happen at times. It's not a guarantee um, that you would get it removed, but if you ever get a bad review, just let us know. But what Ben just said is important for humans, again, and the algorithm. Your response to the review is one more signal, one more, if you wanna think of like binary, a one and zero. This is just one more one in the system to Google that you're engaged, responsive, make the algorithm love you and it will be really powerful. So uh, let me hit a couple other things here really, please. really quickly. So some, uh, uh, Beth, you asked about with a phone tree. The only thing right now that doesn't work with a phone tree is actually getting the recording of the phone call. All the attribution data we get, you can still text and everything just fine through the system, but it's just the recording piece uh, that, that, that we're working through. Um, so that's the only thing there. Um, so talking about adding contacts and adding clients, let's go over to the contacts area. Okay, so here's all you do. You just hit this import contacts, okay? And this accepts CSV files and you might have to like, yes, this is the first name field. Yes, this is the last name field, but this does take Excel or CSV files to kind of upload in here to kind of get you guys started with the contact list. So fairly easy. Also, while we're here, here's how you send out a text blast. You can individually check the names that you want to, or you can hit this and check everybody right here. Send text message. This is important for you guys to know. So if you're sending out, if you're going to send out like, let's say 300 text messages, the system is going to automatically stagger and time out how those are sent out. Um, and so that's so that different people's phone systems don't view that as spam. So this is just saying, uh, you just got to acknowledge that you hit okay, you type your message and you can send in drip mode. Um, this is actually what I, we're going to strongly recommend doing. Um, so, so you can send them out like this, or you can send them all at once, whatever you guys want to do. And you just type your message here. You're good to go. That's how you would send out a blast to everybody. Okay? Boom. Look at that guys. Short, make, make those texts short and sweet. If you kind of make them four paragraphs long, you know what it's like to get a text like that from a business. Don't do that. Mm -hmm. Um, so make it short and sweet, very friendly. Okay. Uh, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to stop sharing one more time and I'll probably come back to that. Uh, but we're going to go if I can uh, find our main little thread here, where, where did it go? Oh, there it is. Okay, I believe. Let's see if my screen starts to share properly. I'm not seeing it come through. Oh, there we go. Hey. Okay, so that was mistake number three. Uh, mistake number four, I'm going to go a little bit quicker through this, um, but this is maybe one of the biggest hangups we have um, with people who, who come on board with us. Not always, not always, for sure. There's a lot of people that don't do this, but it's become enough of a thing that we wanted to speak to it. Mistake number four, obsess over little details instead of taking your website or ads campaign live. What are we hitting at here? What we're hitting at is we try and take everyone's site live in 30 days or less. Your ad campaign can come on live soon thereafter or even actually now before. That's another conversation for another day. But like if you're waiting to take your ad campaign live and you're currently getting your site built, newsflash, this is an update. We could take your site or I'm sorry, your ad campaign live before the site is. But generally, what we run into is people who have, and again, like you guys are in a space that does require you to be a perfectionist. And I love that. That's a gift. That's not a bad thing, but it is a problem when it comes to, Hey, I want the about page on my new site to be a hundred percent a plus dialed in no changes, no edits before I take it live. And the thing we're pushing at here is if that's the goal, if perfect is the goal, you're going to miss a lot of time. Time is the asset you need to leverage. And so here's the Pareto principle, the 80-20 rule. 20% of what you do generates 80% of the results. The 20% in this case is just taking your site live. Getting a new site live 
will generate 80% of the results. Does that make sense? If you don't take your new site live, right? Because you want to focus on the 80% of edits and perfection and changes until you feel perfect about it, you're going to miss the four fifths of results that come from just getting a new site live. Why? Because the new site we're building is going to help you generate uh, form fills, improve your phone calls, um, improve your rank on Google. And until I take that thing live, you're not going to get the benefit. Until your site is live, you won't get the benefit. Same with your ad campaign. Until your ad campaign is live, you don't get the benefit of it. And so we have a really good team. We write content. We make edits. We make changes. Please send them to us. Like we want to make edits in that first 30 day window, if that's where you are, or if you've been with us for years, we will make edits for you. But the idea of ship it, take it live and get the biggest benefit, which is just the thing being out there in the wild. That's something we run into that we just wanted to name and speak to. And so, I mean, just to be frank, are there some people right now who aren't taking their sites or ad campaigns live because they want it perfect? Yes, we'll work with you. That's your call. But what we're saying is the people who perform the best are those who move quicker and then come back and make changes later. Fix that about page later. Fix that logo that you want to update and work on later. Fix that blog page that we haven't imported later. Because just getting the thing live when people are looking for you is the principle we're trying to get at. Just get it live and we will make edits and changes. So some of you, this has nothing to do with you. Others of you, we're not trying to call you out specifically. And if you're brand new to Tax for Marketer and watching this, just trust us. Just like sending email weekly. If that feels uncomfortable, trust us. If taking a new site live that you don't feel perfect about scares you, trust us. Because thing number one is most of the time, no one's going to find that about page paragraph in like the first couple of days of your site being live. It's just not going to happen. People visit the home page or a landing page if we're driving them from an ads campaign. A lot of people don't poke around your website that much. It doesn't mean you shouldn't have those pages. There's a bajillion reasons you should. Extra service pages, contact page, about page. Yeah, 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 yeah. Have all that stuff. And I want you to love it. I really do. Um, we've got some really cool sites that we built for our clients. Mm -hmm. But let that be an overtime thing instead of a, it has to be an A+. plus. Because what you're going to miss, again, is 80% of the results of just getting the thing live. And I do want to point out, too, that having our team make those changes happens relatively quickly. So, um, you know, if once you decide what you want that perfect language text for you to say, send it over and, and, and that will happen pretty quickly. We're not telling you take the site live and then we're not going to touch it for six months. We're just saying, let's start getting results now. And then as soon as you craft whatever copy you are happy with, send it over to you and we can have it up in a few days. I mean, yeah. it, it really does happen pretty quickly, but we want you guys to get more leads. We want your businesses to grow. Yes. Perfect is the enemy of the good. Okay. Your site's live. Mistake number five, ignore web leads that fill out your website form. What am I talking about? All of our clients who have an ad campaign or a website with us, our main call to action is a questionnaire. That questionnaire is filled out one at a time. If you've had a website up with us for a while, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's that main thing um, uh, that people will fill out right when they visit the top of your site, right? So it's, it's, it's throughout your site as well in different places, but it's the first thing people see. So this is our main call to action. And when people fill that out, here's what happens. You get emailed the responses. So when the prospect says, hey, and let's just show you some examples. Here's some real examples. I pulled these this morning. Um, most of them are, all of them are from February. Um, so like really recent time frame. There's no sensitive contact information here. These are just people's problems. But this got filled out on four different client sites in the last couple of days. This gets added to your email system automatically. We follow up with people automatically when they fill out this form from your site or ad campaign. That's our quick um email campaign that just says, hey, got your, your stuff. Um, we'll, we'll get back in touch with you. Just wanted to let you know. I'm going to send you weekly emails. Here's what you can expect. It's a startup or a warm-up um, email sequence. That happens automatically. And that comes from you. 
you can see that in your email dashboard. If you ever want to edit the content um, that's sent to web leads who fill out this form, you can very, very easily. You don't have to, but you can. But then they're added to the drip email content. But here's what's not going to happen. I'm not going to get them scheduled with you unless we've got that as a process in place. And I'm not going to call them for you. These are leads. Call your leads. Schedule your leads with you. So I can do that via process. You can add in that quick follow-up email sequence, that warm-up email sequence, your Calendly link, your Acuity link, your whatever scheduling link you use. And just a note, high level does have a scheduling function that will come in like phase three or four down the line. It's not going to be like near term, but eventually we will probably have a scheduling option in high level. That's again, another like phone stuff. It's complicated just because you have to work this in your system, work this in your calendar. It's coming, but whatever you're using now, whether you get that form in your inbox, remember that form we just showed you, and you want to call them or have your admin team call them or email them. What I'm saying is I have run into a number of people who have a lot of really good leads sitting in their kind of repository um, that we provide you with. Hey, here's everyone's ever filled out the form. And they're like, oh man, I didn't know that was there. And it's like, we need to talk about this. Mm -hmm. We need to make sure people know this is happening. We need to like bang the drum. You guys are getting real leads to say, hey, help me. I have tax problems. Mm -hmm. I've got a business. I, I'm, I found your site. I want your help. Follow up with them. We are doing that automatically and we're adding them to the weekly emails, but it's on you guys to go close them. So we can do that a number of ways. You can add your scheduling link. You can have a system in place, but I just want to highlight like that. That's really happening. Um, ben, what else you got? Yeah. So pick up the phone and give them a call or have someone in your office to do that. If, if you have a, an office assistant or, or, or someone else on your staff, um, now that we have clients to set up, you could shoot them a text and just kind of start the conversation that way. But as you're leading people down this path, try not to make it feel like an intake process at the doctor's office. Have someone get on the phone with them and, and talk to them, ask those qualifying questions in a conversational format, okay? Build that trust and let them know that, that, you, that you want to help them and that you're capable of helping them in a relational and conversational kind of way. One other thing I wanna hit here, if you have someone that is answering your phones for you, find a way to get them some type of phone skill training. Now, maybe that means find a program online or pay someone to do whatever. Maybe it means you just sitting down with them and being like, hey, these things are important to me. I want you to, to treat our leads this way. I want to, um, uh, whatever that is, set those expectations so that you don't have people just kind of answering the phone. Hello, hi, do you do this? No, I'm retired, whatever it is. That's, okay, that's a funny story. We, we listen to people's call recordings. So we had a client who was set up on call recording and he will remain anonymous. But we, he was paying us to do ads, right? We had a site live, we were ad campaign live, and we listened to a call recording where he's, you know, hello, Hey, I found you online. I need help with tax X, Y, Z thing. How'd you find this number? I found your website on Google. I'm retired and hangs up. So that that's the owner. And that, that's a funny example. It's just something that didn't understand what was going on. And they were a little bit spoofed by, I've never got calls before from the internet. So we're doing our job. That's great. But they were surprised. Um, but what I am saying and what Ben has said is, Hey, maybe you as the business owner, maybe you don't feel really comfortable doing sales. Some of you do. Some of you are awesome at it. Um, but regardless, having kind of like a, a conversation with some benchmarks or principles, put something in place that can be foundational to the conversation. We did an office hours on this last year. It's in our members area. If you want to go listen to Nate and our team, we had multiple clients on and we actually listened to some of our clients' live recordings. Um, and we talked through them. So that's in your members area under office hours. Just go back to 2021. Um, just scroll down a little bit. It probably really isn't that far down. There's not like a ton of office hours we've recorded yet. Um, so it's right there, like phone skills, sales skills, because if I'm getting your phone to ring or I'm getting you leads to fill out this form and you guys don't do anything with it, that that's what we're harping on here. Like we are trying to give you the baton 
when this person's ready to close. You guys got to be able to grab the baton and close them. And eventually we'll probably provide even more resources on this front. Um, but what we're saying is make sure you know what's happening on the phone from your business. Um, make sure you know, um, because some of you don't. Um, and hey, if you use a VA, even more important, if you use someone that's just not in your office that you have kind of limited control over, using the call recordings for quality control, yes, 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 yes. And teach them, train them, tell them what you want. VAs are great, but like, unless you train them, they're just going to kind of do what they do. Set those expectations. Yeah. And, and hold them to it. And, and I've heard of amazing stories of VAs being great, but it's not going to usually come out of the box, right? Um, okay. That's mistake number five. Here's again, the leads. These are emailed to you and these live in your data and analytics dashboard on your members area. Um, and I'll try and get a screen uh, screen share of that before we're done here just to show you. But you guys have a data and analytics page right smack dab in the middle of your members area. It says data and analytics. And anyone who's ever filled out this form, you'll see them right there. They all are right there. So if you want to go back and see who's filled out the form for you, if you've missed this, go there and check. They're all there. You haven't lost them. Uh, you don't need to dig through your inbox. You'll always be emailed and that will always then be added to the repository in data and analytics. And again, I'll try and show you exactly where that is if you don't know by the end of this. Um, we kind of talked about this a bit, but Ben, mistake number six, take it away. So schedule appointments with your good leads and clients. Ask that question. Take the step. You kind of feel like they're good. Don't leave the ball in their court. So this would kind of be in one sense, kind of like asking for a close, if you think of it in, in, a, in a sales format, let's get you scheduled. What day works for you? And in just starting the conversation and getting that on your calendar, if you work with other people in your office or whatever, set up some kind of shared calendar system so that you guys can all see what's going on. Um, uh, GCal, so like Google Calendar is a great one. There's a bunch of other great ones out there and find an easy way to help get those appointments scheduled that interface with that calendar. Um, so Calendly is, uh, I, I put some examples down there. Um, Calendly is a, is a great, there, there's a, even a free version that interfaces with your calendar to kind of set up, you know, to schedule openings. Um, if some of you use an acuity schedule or whatever that is, guys, ask for the appointment, schedule the call, don't leave the ball in their court, okay? Yes, um, the, whatever you do, don't leave it in the prospect's court to close themselves. That, that's kind of the idea here. Don't let them have to follow up with you. Have a proactive plan and process to seal the deal. And mm -hmm. we're saying just putting a con, uh, an event on the books, but you could do this other ways, right? It's, it's up to you, but for most of us, you know, some of us are in office, great. Get them a scheduled time to come in the office, fine. But like most of you are scheduling appointments online. And if you're not, this might be a great change um, just to help you stay efficient and organized. Um, but yeah, I love what Ben said. Don't let them close themselves. You close them. You pull them over the finish line. You make the next steps so that then they can become a client and start getting you the documents and information you need. Mm -hmm. so, so that's it really. It's just kind of, Go, go for that close. Um, schedule the appointment, take the steps. If they're not really sure, set yourself a reminder for you to follow up with them. Uh, the, uh, I mean, it's also good to just kind of point out like, well, hey, if you think you're probably going to be available next week, let's get something on the books. You're going to get a reminder. And if we need to move it, we need to move it. But let's just take those steps to kind of get you the help that you need, whatever that is. Awesome. Um, there was a seventh mistake, Ben. There oh, it is. It's a bonus. Oh, bonus mistake. Um, okay. I, I am been too, but like, um, I specifically feel really strongly about this one. Um, if I'm getting you leads and if you're closing them and if all that's going great, but you charge 150 bucks for individual tax work, that's a problem or pick a county bookkeeping service, you know, whatever services you're providing. If you are always trying to race to the bottom in terms of price, you're going to struggle to grow. You're, you're going to struggle to grow. Set some, and part of this is just psychology of how you see yourself. And like some of you are established and you price yourself perfectly. Like I, I know those people are out there. Some of them are on the call. 
I know some of you on the call right now that do price yourself really well in your sharp and you, you've got it down to a science and you don't just try and race to the bottom in terms of pricing. And I'm not talking about sometimes offering a discount to pull them over the finish line. That's not a bad thing, but there's others that I talk to where it's like, okay, great. You guys think you could get me X leads. You think you could get it done in this time frame? To me, that is going to look like this revenue. And I scratch my head. It's like, wait, wait, wait. The numbers you just told me tell me that you're like way below minimums of what we find normal nationally. So you need to, just for tax work, because it's tax season, I'm only going to talk about that right now. We're not doing like a pricing coaching seminar here. But if you're charging less than $300 for simple tax return work, you're, you're too low. Um, you just generally... And it depends on the state you're in. I'd say in California, it's probably closer to like four, although there's exceptions, but like no less as a general rule as of right now than $300. And that's not based on data. That's not based on anything other than what I anecdotally find as like a good starting point. And then it scales up from there, right? So that's, that's uh, I said $300, 300 for simple tax return work. Simple, not complicated. Um, complicated in business and accounting and bookkeeping and tax resolution, different stuff, all different things, right? But I am saying it's not uncommon, even for established firms to still be racing to the bottom. You don't need to do that. And you might also find benefit cutting out the clients that always try and nickel and dime you and replacing them with ones who say, 500 bucks, got it done. It's coming in the mail or I'm sending it right now because I need your help and I know you're worth it. Now, all of this is helped when you send emails, when your website's well done, when you have good reviews, when your online ecosystem makes you look like a boss, you can charge fees like a boss or maybe just up to like normal benchmarks. So getting everything else in place is going to make higher fees really easy because you're going to have so much good feedback from existing clients. You're providing great value via email, even before they're a client, right? They get the weekly emails before they are a client of yours. You guys are going to make it a lot easier to sign people up at a higher rate if you just run the play that Tax for Marketer is putting out. Now, it also comes down to you guys, right? And salesmanship, phone skills, how you serve them, but like leaving some of that aside. Um, yeah, man. And hey, Phil, thank you so much for the note. We are... We are almost to the top of the hour here. Um, if you need to bounce, see you, buddy. The recording will be in the uh, office hours area. We'll stay on past the top of the hour to talk more about phone tools, client stack, other questions. Um, so thank you for joining us. Uh, that's our bonus mistake. We're going to kind of transition now to talking about, um, again, the app. So um, if you have any questions before we transition, here's a little slide. Talk about ads, talk about client stack more in a specific way, talk about your website or email services. Hey, I saw the email service thing. I've never done that. Okay, well, let's chat. Please reach out to us and we'd be glad to, to go more in depth to make sure you know how to do that. That's what we're here for. You can call us, you can email us, you can live chat us. We're really responsive. Anything you guys need. Um, however, let's go back to the app. And again, if you wanna post a random other question in the chat section, Go right ahead, but I'm going to stop sharing my screen and pull back up um, the screen we had before for Ben, if I can. It vanished. Where did it go? I don't know. There it is. Uh -huh. Got it. All right, half second here. Okay, so you should be seeing now our client stack app again. And so we're gonna kind of harp on the phone tools thing. Cause that's again, like this is a soft launch. It's ready to go. Um, there's some details here for everyone that'll be good to kind of track with. Cause if you do this, if you use the phone um, functions and services that we're now providing through client stack, you've got to kind of know what you're getting into. So there's an email that you kind of have to get and acknowledge, but also we're just gonna kind of talk about it um, here. So if there's questions or things you want to ask about as Ben gets into it, Please let us know, but we are now talking about phone tools, Ben. Bam. Take it away. Yeah, so probably the, the uh, I'm just going to quickly run over what some of those different phone tools and phone features are. And if you guys do have some different questions or whatever, just kind of chime in and, uh, and, and I'll 
we'll, I'd be happy to answer those for you. Um, so again, for the phone tools that we're doing, this is kind of a, a soft launch. So you guys that are um, that are, are getting some of our emails that are on these webinars, you know, if this is kind of something that you want, please reach out to us to at, to support a text for marketer, and we'd be happy to get that process started. So there's uh, a few key things, and this is probably in in the email that you got as well. But there are calling features, and so one of those is call. So call what we call call tracking, and that includes call recordings and then call attribution data. So getting those calls recorded and then also attribution data, meaning where those calls came from, how did they find you? All of that is very important and very insightful stuff, okay? So those are the main calling features. Now it's a little bit different. Um, like I said, if you have a phone tree and we're working through some of those things and to be honest with you, maybe a little bit of insider information, I'm pretty sure that I'm going to figure out a way and we're going to figure out a way to develop like a almost like an automated phone tree system right within ClientStack. So don't ask for that right now because I still got to figure it out and build it. But that's that's kind of on my roadmap, something that I, I want to do for you guys. So the other the other phone features all have to do with texting. So the first one that we mentioned before is missed call text back. OK, um, and so that one. Also, if you have a phone tree, gets a little bit different because once your automated message answers the call, then it's no longer a missed call. Even if it kind of, they have to listen to the recording, press the button, it goes through to you and then goes to the voicemail. It's a little bit different. We're working on it, okay? Um, so missed call text back is a huge benefit that, um, that that's going to help you guys a ton. Um, the next thing that, that's a phone feature is just the ability to, to shoot out text blasts like I just showed you guys um, really, really, really easily, okay? Um, the, the third thing that I didn't mention in this, but we've talked about before is web chat. So uh, the reason why I'm throwing that, I'll, I'll tell you why that, that it gets thrown into the texting category. Um, we talked about this a little bit last week is so, any of you guys that want it as part of the of these phone tools, we can put a web chat widget on your website. You know, the little bubble in the por in, in the corner when someone taps on it, it opens up and they can put their information in there and ask questions. What makes this one within ClientSec so powerful is that as soon as they you know do their name, they have to give their phone number and their initial question, it immediately moves it into a text conversation. So they don't need to stay at their computer. They don't need to leave that web chat window open. They don't need to make sure that their computer doesn't fall asleep and the connection's lost, none of that stuff. They immediately move the conversation over to a text message. From your end as the client stack user, it just goes right in that conversation window and you're just kind of uh, typing and going back and forth. From their end, they're in a text conversation with you. Okay, so that's really massively convenient for them. They can have their conversation with you on the go. And if they need anything in the future, they can also just kind of reach out via text. Um, so really, really super powerful. Um, so go ahead, Christian. Can I, can I jump in? Troy, are you with us? I am. Hey. hey guys, you, you should know Troy, but if you don't, Troy Lakey is also on our call and he is our COO. Um, so he's the big cheese on the call. Uh, <laughs> hey, cheese. <laughs> <laughs> you want to jump in and talk about this too? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm here. I've uh, been, been slaying it. Thank you guys, by the way, um, for the amazing content at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Guys are amazing as uh, everybody can see and knows. Yeah. Say it again. I, didn't... <laughs> I said you're amazing. You guys are both uh, experts in your field. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, yeah, thanks. That's, you didn't say that. That's okay. That's, well, that's a good Friday. Tell us later. It's okay. We're public right now, Troy. It's fine. Jeez. <laughs> Um, you're, you're killing yeah, it. I'm just here to yeah. kind of add add some spice here and there um, on the on the new um, features in uh, client stack. We're excited about them. Just yes. throw throw that spice around. Just throw it. <laughs> all right. So, old old Phil, he's not on the call anymore. Um, did, I, I wonder if we did we get him set up with his phone tools yet? No. So here, I'm going to go over to um, I'm going to go over to another one of the client's accounts that we have who's down in Atlanta, a guy named Jonathan. He's amazing. Um, so here's kind of something that I wanted to make you guys aware of also with, with these calling features are, are something called a whisper message. 
and call connect, okay? Um, and these are some things that you really need to be aware of if you're gonna start using these, these phone tools, okay? So a, a whisper message, um, I can hit this pencil and I can, I can show you. So a, a whisper message is something that you would hear. So your phone rings through the call tracking system, you pick up the phone and it plays, if you hear an automated message that will say something like, you've received a call from your marketing efforts. And that's how you know that that call kind of came via call tracking and the things that us as tax pro marketer are doing to help grow your business. Okay. Whisper message. So that's called a whisper message. It's not a spam call. So if you hear it and we can tell you what it says, that's not a spam call. That's actually the system doing what it's supposed to be doing. And then the next thing that it will say is press any key to connect. And that is called a call connect feature. Okay. And so basically that helps the system know that you're there, you're ready to take the call and kind of really kickstarts it to say, record this phone call. So basically what that would look like is you would hear a whole whisper message that says, uh, you have a call from your marketing efforts, press any key to connect. You would just boop, hit a number on your phone and then the whole system starts working. Now, the other thing that you need to be aware of is right down here, can you see this? Um, this call recording right here, this call may be a uh, recorded for quality assurance. Now, depending on what state you're in, you may have to have that and you may not. By default, we are going to give it to everybody because we don't know the exact rules for every state. So what that means is when the lead or the client ends up calling this number, they will hear a message that all of you guys have heard before when you've called different people. It'll just say, this call is gonna be recorded for quality assurance and then the number is going to start ringing. Um, you don't have to play that message in every state. Um, like this client here is based in Georgia. Um, they, it's called like a one party rule versus a two party rule, something like that. They don't have to. So he opted out of it just so that the phone starts ringing and it just, they don't have to hear that recording. So I just wanted you guys to hear what those were so that you knew what to expect. A whisper message, call to connect feature, and then like just that call recording notice that the the lead or the client on the on the other end is going to hear. Um, so that's on that. I think I actually covered all of the other sweet phone and texting features. A um, couple other things that I did want to quickly mention are if if you connect your Google My Business and you guys can connect your Facebook as well. If anybody messages you on either of those platforms, that's also going to go right into this conversations area. Okay. Um, so you guys can interact with those there. And by the way, here's what a missed call text back message looks like. Okay. So the person calls, doesn't go through, gets the voicemail, boom, they get a text. Hey, sorry, we missed your call. How can we help business name? So kind of very open-ended, you know, make sure to put the business name in there so that they don't kind of get spooked if they're kind of getting some random spam text. Conversation starts. If you want to make this really confusing, just change your business name to like Subway or like McDonald's <laughs> or like some random company. This is this is a, a really powerful feature. I think we you know we drew this out last week. If you were able to join us uh, in this portion of the call last week, um, you heard us talk about this. Um, I'm really excited about this particular feature. Um, if you can just kind of try to reflect and think about the last business where you had this experience where you called and you weren't able to get through and they immediately sent you an email to see how they could help when they weren't able to answer the phone. Um, maybe told you their normal business hours when they'd get back to you, or if it was during normal business hours, try to ask how they could help, try to keep the conversation moving along um, towards an appointment um, so that you could actually get closer to what you actually called about. I mean, I, I can't really think of the last time I had an experience like that with a service business, but um, if you can imagine having as, as a consumer, um, have, having an experience like that, um, you know, it's pretty amazing and you probably want to be pretty loyal um, to, to a, a company like that and this is what you have the opportunity opportunity to do um, with this feature now and i really think this is going to be really really powerful for uh, those who raise their hand to say they want it in their app and let us set it up for you so guys import your contacts into here you don't have to but it'll just kind of help you kind of get, get a starting list if your contacts are kind of managed within your uh, uh, email marketing dashboard uh, with tax pro marketer you can download them right from there and you can upload them kind of right in here and it'll give you kind of a nice starting base. 
One other quick thing I wanted to show you guys, just because it's it's really, really cool. So as part, as part of you guys getting your reputation management tools and stuff set up, okay? After you connect it, I've said this before, I'm probably going to say it every single time I, I'm on one of these office hours. After you connect your Google My Business, go into settings, reputation management, and hit generate link, okay? And it's going to make this link for you, which is super, super important. This is the link that's going to go into those review requests, okay? Here's why this link is so cool. Are you signing into your Google account on here? Probably. Okay. So here's, here's how this link is going to work, okay? Bam. Did you see that? So as soon as they tap on that link, it goes right to the business and opens up a window for them to start leaving the review. If they aren't signed into like their Google account, they'll have to do that quick, but then they're gonna go right here. So minimal amount of clicks, super easy for those clients that you're asking to leave reviews. So this is really, really kind of exciting um, that they have to take so few steps. They can just tap on that link, do it right from their phone. If you text it to them, right from their computer. So really, really kind of special. Get reviews, guys. It's the first thing we rolled out with ClientStack. If you haven't used it yet, do it before the end of the day. Just send one. Even if you just test it on yourself, just practice. Get familiar with it. Because when you, and if you're not already in the heat of busy season, you, you will be soon. Um, having to figure this out, even though it's easy, just figuring out anything new is hard. So like if you've got a little space right now, um, or you find a window, just, just, yeah, figure out how to do this. Don't leave a review of yourself. Thank you, Becca. Becca, uh, she's <laughs> yes. one of our team members. Uh, she's on the call too. She wanted me to highlight. Do not leave a review for yourself. That is both uncouth and will get you flagged. Uh, <laughs> so anyways, what else? Yeah, I, I, and I was going to add, I mean, it, it, I mean, as Ben's showing, you know, as Christian talked about earlier in the presentation in the kind of content portion, um, you know, th this makes it super easy, obviously, to do this. Um, and, you know, we're all aware of sort of reputation management services that are out there and they, they do a great job. A lot of what they do, right, is, is they just kind of help you dominate your listings so well that anything negative about you that's on the internet from a disgruntled former employee or, uh, you know, somebody that was uh, probably very difficult to work with and maybe lambasting you online, um, you know, they, they kind of drown that stuff out by getting you such a, a strong positive presence online that that stuff kind of just disappears and fades to the background. You know, it winds up on page eight of Google and nobody really ever sees it anymore. Or you've got so many good positive reviews from good actual real clients who are reasonable people um, that, you know, nobody really notices anymore that like seven months ago, um, somebody who had unrealistic ex expectations gave you a one-star review and cussed you out on Google, you know? <laughs> um, and so, you know, if you've got, I just wanted to point out that if you've got one of those reviews, we sometimes get asked by clients, you know, what can I do about this? Our client support team is great about, um, you know, offering you suggestions for that. So if you've got a question about that, about something specific, you know, feel free to always reach out to us about that. We're happy to address that specifically and give you some suggestions. But one of the best things you can do for this is to do what Christian is preaching to you, do what Ben is showing you how to do, and, and just get as many good client reviews, real, real reviews from real clients. You don't have to ask them to leave you five stars necessarily. You don't have to only pick, cherry pick the ones that are, are the best just ask a real client for a real review. I mean, those, those are obviously not bad strategies, but just ask a real client for a real review of their experience with you. Um, you know, if they've, after they've come in for services, as Christian described earlier, um, just shoot them, you know, send, hit this button, you know, have, or have your, have your receptionist, uh, you know, hit this button. If you have somebody helping you with such things, um, you know, after they've come in for services, um, you know, and, and, and ask them to, to give you a review. And, and over time, you'll have so many positive reviews that when you have an occasional, one or two or three star review um, from somebody, it kind of just gets ground uh, drowned out um, by by the noise of the of the positive, um, and that that really is is the the core of what a reputation uh, management service uh, essentially uh, does. And we're just kind of we're trying to provide that for you basically in the included services that you have with tax marketers. So you don't have to go spend four figures on a reputation management service every month. You just got that embedded with everything else that we're trying to do for you. Reputation management services are expensive. If you're new to this. This stuff is not free. It is to you guys because you're already with us and we're rolling it out. This is not the point of our conversation today, but like we might eventually charge for this app. We, we really haven't like got a plan for that. That's not like a threat. I'm just saying like this level of service is normally fairly expensive 
because uh, the best ones that are worth getting are, are not $5 a month um, or free. So make use of this. Um, sometimes there's a problem where like, if you don't pay money for it, you don't see the value in it. We're trying to get you over that hump of like, pretend like you paid the normal money you would for this system because it's really worth a lot and start using it. Um, that, that's just a mindset shift when you're like, okay, I made an investment. I'm going to use this tool. We're giving this to you for free. We want you to engage with it like you paid for it, like you would any software or tool that you pay for. Yeah, that, and that's that's worth drawing out further. Uh, ben, I don't think we've yet highlighted um, kind of the telecom services related to this. Um, but but there, are, there are specific telecom services related to, you know, we're all aware to sending text messages, uh, I'm sorry, costs, you know, from telecom services related to sending out a text message, receiving a text message um, that actually costs money no matter how you do it. Um, and to, uh, to track a call and have a phone number for doing that um, in place and, and to uh, record calls, all of that costs money. And if you go to a service that provides such, uh, you know, uh, services like call rail or some of the others that are out there, um, you're going to pay by the, by the, uh, the call that comes in. And, and not only that, but the, the minute uh, for, for the number that you get for for every minute that gets uh, recorded on that call, you're going to pay for that stuff and it, and it adds up over time. Um, and there, there are services out there that provide text marketing services. You know, some of them are great. Uh, we're actually friends with some of those folks. And so I'm not, I'm not wanting to compare us against them. Um, but I, I do want to point out that if you went to go get these texting services and, and, and went to go get these call tracking and recording services uh, that Ben is showing us here, um, you, you would pay on average, uh, you know, for kind of the average, um, business size um, that, that is on this call right now, um, you would be paying a few hundred dollars a month um, for, for these services that we are, that we're actually including in, we made the decision to include these in your client stack um, app um, and to cover the telecom costs for you as well. And so that if you use these there, it's gonna incur real concrete, hard telecom costs for every call you receive, for every text you receive, every text you send, and we are going to pay the bill for those for you. And we're not adding to what you're paying us. Free 99 is the cost. <laughs> and every time I say that, I feel a little bit crazy and I hope we're not making a bad decision uh, from a business standpoint, because you guys understand how this all works, how business works, right? Um, but uh, we, do, we want this to be something that we're not nickel and diming you. Um, you know, we want this to be something where you, you are paying to receive marketing services for, from us and we are giving you as much value as we can. Um, and we want you to get in this app and be using it. Um, ben and our team that have worked on this have built an amazing app for you to use. that's going to really benefit your, your company. I think everybody can see how these features are going to help you get more clients, keep more clients, better clients that you can charge more. Um, that you know probably are happier just to get to work with you. Um, you know that's that's what we're working toward on your behalf, and we we want to we want this to be something that uh, is just providing more value to you as a client. We're not planning to uh, you know charge you for it. Um, you know, and so if you raise your hand for this right now, like we're just going to be covering those telecom costs for you that you would be spending a few hundred dollars with any other service to have, um, and not to mention all the reputation management features. So this is really a, a big big deal. Marketing CRMs cost money. All this stuff we're trying to kind of like save you money and just be sort of a uh, a well-rounded provider for you and um, what you already have with us. Hey, that's that's so helpful, Troy. We we hadn't shared that yet. We'll probably harp on that again next week on our office hours, I'm imagining. Um, and we just say that to say like, our job is to help you guys. And this is what we put in place to help you grow among the other dozen things we're already doing. And so we'll keep doing that. We're going to keep rolling out features. We're going to keep making improvements. Uh, we want to make them easy to use and seamless. There's some, um, obviously like your guys' just orientation and knowing what you're getting into. But like, if you want the phone tools, send us an email, support a tax for marketer and Ben will get right on it. Get his team tasked with getting that built for you. Um, we will do more office hours. This recording will be put in the members area. Um, and we'll, uh, probably Troy, we probably need to send out a reminder, just like, Hey, if you've been on office hours, here's where they're all at and, and show a screen grab. Cause I don't have a I'm not logged into any test account to show them right now. Yeah. Um, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, just go to your general members area. It's right there. Um, but we'll make sure to remind you guys, hey, these are recorded. We'll do more. Um, and if there's no more questions, maybe there's one I saw. Nope, just a perfect thanks from Jacqueline. Thanks for being with us, Jacqueline. Um, guys, we'll, we'll catch you next week. Good luck. Um, busy season's in full swing. If that's not you um, and you want to chat more about this, feel free to get a call with us and we'll make sure we go deeper into your situation. Um, or whatever feature you want to dig into. Um, so we're here to help you. Um, and uh, we'll 
We'll be doing this again next week, probably same time uh, on another topic. And with that, I'm going to shut this thing down. See you guys. Bye, guys. Bye.